This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to our programming series. Today we are going to look at Non-Abundant Sums Euler Problem number 23. We will be taking a swing at it using Python 3, so let's have a look. Non-abundant sums, a perfect number as you can see as I'm reading from the uh, base template I've created here uh, with my um, call to main, with my call from the, or excuse me, with uh, my call if we are main, with my call from the main by over uh, in the separate solution and here is where the math will take place my regular boilerplate. So let's see, a perfect number is a number for which the sum of its proper devices is exactly equal to the number. For example, 28 has the devices 1, 2, 4, 7 and 14, summing back up to 28. 28 is a perfect number. A number n is called deficient if the sum of its proper devices is less than n, and it's called abundant if the sum exceeds n. 12 is the smallest abundant number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 combined make 16, which is larger than 12 itself. The smallest number that can be written as the sum of two abundant numbers then is 24, 12 plus 12. By mathematical analysis it can be shown that all integers greater than 28, 123 can be written as the sum of two abundant numbers. However, this upper limit cannot be reduced any further by analysis, even though it is known that the greatest number that cannot be expressed as the sum of two abundant numbers is less than this limit. Find the sum of all the positive integers which cannot be written as the sum of two abundant numbers. So a lot going on there, splicing in perfect numbers. Um, also uh, giving us a definition for abundant numbers, so when the... Uh, the sum of its proper divisors is bigger than the number itself. Note that the divisors here don't um, include the number itself, obviously. Um, so let's let's dive into this. As you can see, this is about uh, divisors again. So what I've already done, uh, I have added our uh, divisors method from uh, Euler 21 to the Euler lib. So libpoiler.py now has this method copied in from the um, uh, from the previous place we used it, 21. 21. Um, nothing's changed, we can switch between including or excluding the, uh, the number n itself and it will return a list of all the numbers it finds uh, based on the square root. Now how that works you can look up in um, the mathematical video with uh, that came along with Euler problem number three here on the channel. So that's our divisors. Let's uh, import solutions dot lib Euler e and let's see what we've got to do here. Um, so the basic case here. We don't really get. We have uh, some small data to test if we find abundant numbers. For instance, um, uh, 12, obviously, and from that 24. But we don't really have any smaller test cases um, for the structure that we're trying to make than other than um, the the requested n itself. So let's see, what should we do? Um, we are looking for um, numbers that are not the sum of two abundant numbers. So to start, I'd like to find all the abundant numbers. In the range... All, all the way up to the upper bound that we were given. Uh, so if the sum of the divisors is bigger than uh, 
the number we are currently looking at. Uh, that means that this number is a abundant number. So now we have a list of all the abundant numbers. I am somewhat interested in seeing um, that was pretty quick and seems to work. Now let's um, let's simply compute all the possible sums that roll out of this. So we are going to instantiate um, an x We're going to do this uh, on array index base rather than um, uh, looking over the elements themselves. Because we need to keep track of where we are in the list so that we don't add up um, uh, to. Um, we don't add up elements 2 and 5 and later on 5 and 2 again. We are only going to look ahead, so if, if we've done 2 and 5, then when we hit 5, we will start looking at 5 itself. We do need to include the, um, um, the term itself. Um, in fact, this should then run all the way up, so it can actually fetch itself. There we are. Now, this is um, we can uh, optimize this a little bit. We can quit early if we notice that um, the numbers we are adding up here uh, adds up to something greater than the n we are bounded to. Then we can break this for loop. We won't have to keep on adding up numbers. Uh, we can break the, f the, the y for loop. We fall back to the x for loop. We pick the next abundant number. Then we start checking it all out. So uh, there's quite a lot of numbers here. First time this runs, this adds 12 and 12, 12 and 18, 12 and 20, 12 and 24, 12 and 30, etc. Until let's say 12 and 36 was bigger than the n we gave it. And then it will break. Then it will take 18, 18 plus 18, 18 plus 20, etc. Until it hits 18 plus. 30, which will be bigger than uh, whatever uh, n we gave it that makes it greater 36. Then I'll take the 20, etc. etc. So the number of sums it will do on uh, each further iteration will be uh, slightly less than uh, the number of uh, calculations it did in the loop before. And now we want the sums of abundance. To include Q here, uh, it might be possible for this sort of sum if we take a look. I see a couple of numbers to do this. Um, if we add up 12 and 30, we will uh, 12 and 36 will we hit the same number as uh, 18 and 30? Uh, so I want to prevent that from happening. So here's our friend the set again. So every number um, that was added to the sums of abundance will appear only once in the list now, because the set operation makes sure that every element in a given collection is unique and drops any duplicates. Now let's generate a list of all the um, non-sums. Uh, let's see now. Uh, So 
So every possible sum the two abundant numbers could make is in sums of abundance. So if we run through every number uh, that's uh, asked of us to, to uh, look at, so the 28, 1, 2, 3, uh, if you look at every number in that particular range and check if it is on our pre-calculated list of some abundance numbers, then we don't care about it. But if it isn't on the list, if it's not on the list, then we want to include it in this list. This is a um, list comprehension. So everything between the square brackets makes a um, uh, makes a statement that generates a list, and we are interested in a's, where a's is a number of the range zero through um, well, it would stop uh, before 28, 1, 2, 3, but because we have the plus one, it will include 28, 1, 2, 3, and it will check if that's in our sum of abundance. Now we are interested in the height of this number. I'm also interested in the timing info, so we will kick up main pi instead of running this file on its own. 23, default argument. This does take a second, uh, it's, it's doing quite some calculations. 3.8 seconds and there's the answer spoiler alert if you enter this over at project Euler you will get the green check mark so that's it for this problem I don't have any um, neat tricks to show you to get this sub one second or whatever um, it, it simply does a lot of calculations uh, you could look at it the other way around so that you take um, uh, every number in the loop and then subtract an abundant number and see if the result is again in the list of abundant numbers but that takes quite a while longer and um, because then it would have to um, do more checks uh, it has to do some calculations per number instead of simply looking up things per number in the range uh, which is quicker so there's problem number 23 and I will see you again for problem number 24 and you might want to get some soda and chips for that one because that's going to be a slightly more complicated story. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.